All right, welcome back. We are in our final unit for the year. It's hard to believe. Um, we are going to be starting an, a unit on inequalities. And just as a quick little preview for what's going to happen today and tomorrow, um, we're going to be looking at how to write inequalities. We're going to be looking at um, how to graph inequalities. And we're also, also going to be looking at um, what makes up the solutions of inequalities. So without further ado, what is an inequality? Um, an inequality is just a fancy word for a mathematical sentence that compares two things, right? We're going to be comparing two different expressions and we're going to compare them using one of four symbols. So here are the four symbols that you might see in an inequality. You've probably seen some of these before. Maybe some of them are new. I'm circling them. There are four different symbols. So let's go through what each of those symbols are, um, what it means, and I'm going to go through some helpful phrases that are commonly associated with these symbols. So I'm putting this in a table. Once I've revealed the whole table, you might want to screenshot it or copy it down yourself in your notes so that you have it to reference throughout this unit. This will be a handy dandy little cheat sheet uh, to use throughout the unit when you're doing work. Um, but okay, our first symbol is this one. You've probably seen it before. This symbol is the less than symbol. Um, so you might see something is less than something else. This is the symbol you would use to represent less than. Another phrase that is commonly associated with this, you might hear, uh, is fewer than. So if you hear those phrases, this is the symbol that you want to use. Our next symbol is this one. This is the greater than symbol. I'm assuming that many, if not all of you, have seen these two symbols. Um, another phrase for this symbol would be is more than. It's pretty common sense, but um, is less than, is greater than, these are the two symbols. Now let's move into two that you might not have seen. This symbol here, it looks like a less than symbol, but it also has a little dash under it. It's actually like half of an equal sign. This symbol is the is less than or equal to symbol. So when you've got something here, it's something that's less than or equal to the other thing that it's being compared to. Now, I would definitely take a moment, if I were you, to write down or make a star by these two phrases that are associated with this. You're going to see these, and you're really going to have to stop and think what that means. Is at most is no more than. All right? So if something is at most, so let's say we had x is at most 7. At most means this can't be greater than 7, but it could be equal to 7. The most it can be is 7. So whatever x is has to be less than 7, but it also could be equal to 7. So that's why it is at most or is no more than fits with this symbol. It's not more than 7 in the example I've given, which means it has to be less than or it could be equal to. All right, on the flip side, our last symbol here is the greater than or equal to symbol. So it's a greater than sign with half of an equal sign under it. So is greater than or equal to. So two phrases that are commonly associated with this is at least and is no less than. So if I have some number is at least 7, if it's at least 7, it could be equal to 7, but at least means it has to be greater than 7. So whatever this number could be equal to or greater than 7 if it's at least 7. It can't be less than 7. The least it can be is 7. So at least if something's at least something else, you're going to use the greater than or equal to. Same with this other phrase, is no less than. It's not less than 7. Could be 7, just can't be less than 7. So it could be equal to or greater than 7. So this little intro uh, slide goes over all four symbols, what they mean, 
and some commonly used key phrases that go along with them. So we're going to use these phrases now to write out some of our own example inequalities. So I'm going to go through three examples with you. The first one says a number, which we're using C, so it's an unknown number, is less than negative 4. This one's pretty straightforward. C is less than negative 4. So this word phrase can be translated into an inequality, and this, what I've written in blue, would be the inequality. C is less than negative 4. Can't get any simpler than that. All right, example two. We have a number, which we're representing with the letter K, which means it's unknown. So some unknown number plus five, that sum is greater than or equal to eight. All right, so let's translate this. A number K plus five, so K plus five, is greater than or equal to eight. Right, and all we're doing right now is translating. We're not solving anything, we're not coming up with any solutions, we're just straight up taking words, turning them into inequalities, practicing using the symbols. All right, in our last example that we'll go over together, it says four times a number Q, so four times some, some unknown number is at most 16. So let's go through this one. Four times a number Q can be represented with four Q, four times Q, is at most, so the most it can be is 16. So it cannot be greater than 16, it needs to be less than 16. But since it says it could be at most, 16 is included in this. So it's less than or equal to 16. It can be at most 16 or anything less than 16. So this side of the um, equation or the inequality has to be less than or equal to 16. All right, so that's translating word phrases into inequalities. And it's helpful if you have our chart from the first slide. So I would, again, make sure you've copied it, that down or screenshot it or something so that you can ref reference it during your work today and this whole unit. Okay, now, if you were looking at these inequalities on the last slide, you might have been thinking, huh, there's not just one number that makes this true. For example, example one says a number C is less than negative four. Well, there's a bajillion numbers that could satisfy this and make this true. There's not just one answer. Same for the second one, right? Something plus five has to be greater than or equal to eight. Well, there's an infinite number of answers. There's tons of answers. There are some numbers that won't work, but there's an infinite number that will work. Um, so with that being said, for inequalities, there are going to be more than one number that makes an inequality true. Inequalities don't just have one solution. When we were solving equations this year, and we did that just last unit with our negative numbers, there is one answer that makes an equation true. That is not the case for an inequality. Inequalities have infinite numbers of solutions. There's more than one answer for an inequality. So when we are finding the solution to an inequality, what we're finding is something that's referred to as a solution set. It's a set of solutions. It's more than one number. And so I'm going to go over with you um, how to... Uh, determine if something is a solution and then how to write the whole solution set. So the best way to do that is with an example. So I'm going to start here. First example. I've got the inequality x plus 1 is greater than 7. And what I'm asking here is the thing that's out here on the right, x equals 8. Does this make this inequality true? Is this a solution? And the way that you can test and see is to plug it in and check. So if I put in for x the 8, I would have 8 plus 1 is greater than 7. 
is that true? Well, 8 plus 1 is 9, which is greater than 7. So that means that, yes, this is a solution to the inequality. Now, what else would have been a solution to this inequality? The way that you can figure that out is just test it out. Well, if I had, let's say I had the number 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. Is 6 greater than 7? No. So it can't be 5, and it's not going to be any of the things that are less than 5. Because if I have a number less than 5, that's going to get even further away from 7. Uh, what if I had 6? Well, 6 plus 1 is 7. Uh, that's not greater than 7, but we're pretty close. So the solution is going to be anything that's greater than 6. If I had 6.1, that would make this inequality true. If I had 7, that would make this inequality true. If I put 100 in for x, that would make this inequality true. Literally any value that's greater than 6 would make this inequality true. So a solution to this example is any number greater than 6. That is the solution set. All x is greater than 6. Any number greater than 6 will work for x. All right, let's look at two more examples. Our next one, uh, we've got 7y is less than 27. And what I'm asking in this problem is, if y equals 4, will that make this inequality true? So the way to prove that is to plug 4 in for y, solve it, and check it. 7 times 4 is 28. And the question becomes then, is 28 less than 27? No way. So this is not a solution to this uh, problem. And it could help us then figure out what the solution set is. I'm not going to do that right now. That's something we're going to do more of as we go on. But I'm sure you could start to think to yourself where, where the solution set would be. All right, our last example on this slide is 5 is greater than or equal to z divided by 3. And we're asking ourselves, is this z equals 15 part of the solution set? Well, the way we can tell is plug in 15 for z and solve. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And so the question then becomes, is 5 greater than or equal to 5? And that is true because 5 is equal to 5. It's not greater than, but remember this symbol is greater than or equal to. 5 is equal to, so that would mean that z equals 15 is part of the solution set. It's one of the solutions that makes this inequality true. Whew, I feel like we've done a lot and we still have one more thing to do today. The last thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at graphing inequalities. Now, graphing inequalities might seem like it's going to be a lot of work, like, oh, I've got to graph something, but it's not as bad as it sounds. It is new, so it's going to take a little getting used to, but I'm going to go through this uh, step by step and show you how you can graph the solution set to an inequality. So inequalities are graphed on a number line. Thankfully, it's not the graph you might be thinking of. You don't have to get graph paper and create an x and a y axis and all that. That's not the graphing we're talking about. What we're going to be doing is just making a simple little number line. And the graph is going to show where all of the solutions are for the inequality. And the best way to do this is just to go through an example. So I'm going to go through four examples. And the reason is there's four different types of graphs for inequalities, depending on the type you have. So the first one I'm going to go through is when you have a, an inequality with the greater than symbol. So I've got x is greater than 4. How do I graph this? Well, step one is pick somewhere on the number line. So 4 is our target, and you're going to pick something that's either to the left or to the right of 4. And you're going to ask yourself, does that make this true? So let's start by picking something on the left. Let's start by picking 3. Is 3 greater than 4? No, it's not. So that means that my solutions are not going to be on this side of the number line. 2 is not going to work. 1 is not going to work. 0 is not going to work. Negative numbers aren't going to work. 
So the left side of 4 is not where the solutions lie. Let's try the right side of 4. If I chose uh, 5, is 5 greater than 4? Yes, it is. So all of my solutions are going to be over here. 6 is greater than 4, 7 is greater than 4, 8 is greater than 4, a bajillion is greater than 4. All of the numbers to the right of 4 work. Does the number 4 itself work? Is 4 greater than 4? No, that's a silly question. So the only numbers that work is anything that's to the right of 4. So here's how you graph an inequality. You always start at the target number, which in this case is 4, and you do one of two things. You either are going to make a open circle or a filled in circle. And the way you can choose is simple. You choose an open circle if the number itself is not a solution. In this case, 4 is not a solution, so we're going to have an open circle. You use a closed circle, on the other hand, if the number itself is a solution to the inequality. The way I think of it is an open circle, pass through, don't include it. Closed circle, it's closed because we're going to count that as one of the solutions. But 4 is not one of those solutions. What are the solutions? Anything that's to the right of 4. And so what I've just done is I've graphed an inequality. This might not look like much, but to graph an inequality, you have an open or a closed circle and an arrow pointing in the direction of the solutions. So the solutions are anything that's to the right of 4. So I have an arrow pointing to the right with an open circle. This will make a little bit more sense as we go through each example. Trust me on this. So let's go to another. Example 2. We're going to be looking at x is greater than or equal to 4. Well, in this case, my target number is 4, so we're going to start there. And you're asking yourself, where are the solutions, to the left or to the right? And since it's greater than, it's going to be everything that's on the right of 4. So my solutions are going to be over here. However, in this case, since it says x can be greater than or equal to 4, we are going to use a closed circle. Why? Because 4 itself counts as one of the solutions as well as everything to the right. So when you're graphing this type of inequality where it's equal to, you're going to use a closed circle because the number itself is one of the solutions in the solution set. So what makes this inequality true? Any number greater than 4 and for itself, closed circle. So you can see the difference between these two. This has no equal to, open circle, because we don't include it. This has an equal to, so four counts, and everything to the right. All right, example three. We're going to go to the other side. Um, we're going to be looking at x is less than four. So I'm sure you could probably guess what this is going to look like. Four is my target number, so I'm starting here on the number line. And this is going to be an open circle because it does not include 4. It's not equal to. It's everything that's less than 4. <clears throat> so that would be 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 100, negative a million, everything that's to the left. So that's why for this graph, it's an open circle with an arrow pointing to the left. So someone looking at this graph would know, ah, all of the solutions to this inequality is everything that's to the left because that's where the arrow is pointing. And they're going to know it doesn't include the number itself because it's an open circle. It passes right through and does not include that number. All right, last example. I bet you can guess it's the one we haven't used yet. X is less than or equal to 4. So for this one, since it's equal to, it's going to be a closed circle on the number because it includes 4. <clears throat> and then which direction does the arrow point? The arrow points to the left because we're talking about everything that's less than 4. So it's the same as example 3 except for this has a closed circle since it can be equal to the 4 itself. All right, so when you are graphing inequalities, you're going to have open or closed circle. You're going to have 
a line pointing in direction of solutions. And that's all we have for today. Um, it might take a little bit of practice to get used to it. It's brand new. Um, but jot some notes down for yourself. Make yourself a little cheat sheet that you can use throughout this unit. Um, everything that we've just talked about today is really going to be the basis for the rest of this unit. So um, take some time today to make some good notes. Screenshot some stuff, however you want to do it. So that when you're working in future days, you aren't thinking to yourself, oh, what was that that he said on the first day? Have it uh, written out, ready to go. Anyways, good luck. Have fun. Ask questions. La, la, la. Bye-bye. See ya.